it can be really compelling to think that if your patient has a score above that cut score, or if they have two or more on the, the six items of the DSM algorithm that they meet for PTSD. And I think that as busy practitioners, we often want an easy way to know what they're suffering from. As I said, I really believe assessment is the bedrock of our entire field. And knowing what's going on with your patient is so key to understanding how do we treat them? What do we do with them next? How do we prioritize? And so being able to have this measure that you can administer in five to 10 minutes and get the score that has some meaning, it can be really tempting to say, well, they do have PTSD or they don't have PTSD, but it's a self-report measure. It's not measuring all of the different criteria associated with PTSD. It can't take the place of clarification that a provider can give. It also, if you look at the items on the PCL, they're understandable to patients, but in some cases, they're slightly different from what we are actually getting at at the symptoms. And so it's really important to remember that this is a tool. And this tool should be used in concert with clinical judgment, and it should be used cautiously. So when you determine, for example, that your patient has a score of 40 on the PCL, it does not mean that they have PTSD. It means they have probable PTSD according to the PCL-5, and probably some additional assessment might be useful. Similarly, when you are administering it during sessions, a two or a three point drop doesn't necessarily have clinical value, right? It's great, it's going in the right direction and that may be a good thing, but that could also just be measurement error. And so I think really making sure that you remind yourself that this is an incredibly useful tool, which I highly recommend using, but that it should be used in the concert of other tools is really the most important piece with the PCL5.